A concerto is always, in the classical era, in the Baroque, a piece for a soloist and an orchestra. And so usually a composer at this time would start with the orchestra, followed by the soloist. In Bach's time, in the Baroque time, sometimes it would be a group of soloists, but in the times of Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, it would usually be just one soloist. And then you would usually hear an introduction, a beginning, almost a symphonic-like beginning of the orchestra, followed by the soloist to show the two different elements. And in the fourth concerto by Beethoven, you have exactly the opposite. You start with this fantastic fantasy-like beginning of the pianist alone without the accompaniment of the orchestra. And this wonderful silence is one of the great things about it, because the music is beautiful as it is. But Beethoven ends it with a question mark. It's not... But he ends it here. This chord is called dominant. It's, it draws us back to the original... Back to the original chord with which we started the piece. But Beethoven puts us in, in mid-air. And instead of the right resolution, he lets the orchestra sneak in from the silence with this. The most unexpected chord. And they continue replying. Without us even noticing, Beethoven already took us back to the original harmony. Because you remember we started here, and the orchestra started here. But very quickly, in just a few chords, we're back. Without even noticing. Beethoven already broke uh, what we expected in the first movement by starting with the piano in a very soft, fantasy-like music. Usually the second, uh, the second movement of a concerto would be sort of an intermezzo, something calm between two allegro movements, two moving forward movements. Here it's quite the opposite. We started with this very relaxed music at the beginning, and the second movement is the most dramatic one in the concerto. The orchestra starts in a unison, Something very threatening, very dramatic, if you want, uh, uh, destiny-like. And the piano answers from the silence. Always these silences in between. This, it's a great thing about this music. So what we sort of missed in the first movement, not really missed, but what was not there, was to show us immediately the differences between the giant mass of the orchestra and the loneliness uh, of the pianist. But we started exactly the opposite way, with the pianist leading the way to the orchestra, and the orchestra takes over from the silence of the pianist, here is the opposite. Here we see the forceful orchestra and the lonely pianist or the lonely human being. You can interpret it as you want. And so finally, at the end of the movement, the orchestra and the piano are dying away together. Well, from this almost deadly silence of the second movement. Very tragic. 
Beethoven starts. Show us that something new is coming, something much more positive, a new energy. And this becomes one of the happiest movements and, and one of the most uplifting. And again, this wonderful contrast of this dreamy like first movement, the very dramatic and, and tragic second movement, and then the last movement uplifting, soft at the beginning and becoming the most joyous music there is. It's, it's such a journey, this music, and therefore it's a real pleasure to do it every time.